What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. That's right, they haven't banned me yet, uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and give you guys the top seven reasons you won't survive the coming collapse. And I hope that uh, none of these apply to you, but, you know, a lot of people out there aren't prepping up, and they haven't been listening to people. They haven't been watching the signs or reading the tea leaves that, hey, this whole... Uh, Titanic is going down rapidly. You know, some, some people are still just playing the violin and acting like nothing's wrong. I, I see them all the time out in society. I'm like, man, how can you be walking around with that big of a grin or a smile on your face when everything we know is going to hell in a handbasket? I don't know, but they do it. It's pretty amazing. So number one thing that could get you killed post SHTF, died of thirst. So you don't want to hear that one day. Oh, he died of thirst. Well, guess what? A lack of water or a lack of a water plan will kill you during the collapse. Drinking contaminated water or not enough water can also kill you. So uh, many things that we use and take for granted every day, from cooking rice to cooking beans to doing all, just staying hydrated with water. If you don't have it, you're going to die. So you better figure out a water plan. That'd be my advice. Number two. Oh, he starved to death. He starved to death. I mean, that's something you don't want to you don't want to hear about happening to anyone you know, much less your own family, right? So, most Americans though, they're living paycheck to paycheck and even tighter since Biden came in and destroyed the economy. Uh and they have less than 1 week's worth of food in their cupboards or their pantry. So, this is going to leave a lot of people starving, of course. Starving people are very dangerous and especially to the prepared. So uh, it's always that old story, the haves and the have nots. And when suddenly, you know, millions of people in these major metropolises and these cities and such, uh, these cesspools, when they run out of food and clean drinking water, guess what? They're coming to you because they know you have it. They watch prepping videos also. They know that uh, the food comes from the suburbs and in the farm and the country land, right? So anyway, they're coming there. Be prepared for that. Number three thing that can get you killed post SHTF. Lack of defensive weapons, tactics, and also offensive weapons. Tactics and training will get you killed. So if you have guns but no training or not enough ammo, you probably ain't going to make it. So you better figure that out. I mean, that's a big deal. I would also throw in like some melee weapons, you know, like even right here, as I'm talking to you, within reach, I've got this uh, Chinese kukri that if somebody came out here messing with me or something and I was out in my shop, couldn't get to my gun, guess what? That's pretty scary coming down, you know, chopping your head off, right? I've also got an El Cheapo Rambo knife. I mean, again, depending on what I wanted to do, if I wanted to slash or stab, I mean, and, you know, a cheap knife will kill you just as good as an expensive one, so uh, you better have some stuff around. You know, I've got a cheapo machete here. I mean, again, great for, you know, slashing, chopping, defending yourself from people that want to do you harm. So, I mean, just things to think about. You might want to have a little bit of everything. It could be as simple as a hammer. I mean, that'll do a lot of damage. Don't let the liberals find out about that or they'll be trying to ban hammers next. So look out, guys. Next up, number four. This is one of those things that uh, you better be looking out for it because everything's stacking up against you. You might be killed by marauders. I mean, very likely. Those big mobs of people in the city, they're going to trickle out there. And if you're far enough out in the suburbs, you may have a little bit of a buffer before it hits you because they're going to clearly go through... Uh, the places that are closer to them first uh, before they get to you. but you, And that may give you some indication of the tactics they're using. And, and hopefully the people in the suburbs won't be caught with their pants down and they'll put up a good defensive line and it will stop before it ever comes to you. But I wouldn't count on that. I mean, when I look around, I see a lot of people that are out of shape, uh, way overweight, uh, couldn't run upstairs if, if they needed to to save their lives. I mean, couldn't run more than... The length of a car or whatever without you know having a coronary or something i mean you know you've, you've seen them right i mean and then there's those other people that i were i was talking about a minute ago that are just walking around like they're in a dazed and confused mentality all the time just grinning from ear to ear like nothing's wrong so uh be ready those people are going to turn into marauders 
Those starving people will seek out your resources. And I emphasize your because they're coming for you. Strong defenses will increase your chances of survival, but even that is no guarantee. Those marauders will form larger and larger groups, and many of them will be armed to the teeth. Uh, because anytime they take one of those suburb houses that put up resistance, they're going to take their guns and ammo as well. So, the, and they already have, you know, the gangbangers. They all have their Glocks with switches on them. I've seen all the TikTok videos and stuff, and not really. I don't watch TikTok. I've never watched a TikTok, but I've seen some clips uh, from TikTok videos where these guys, these gangbangers, like, like down in Dallas and Houston, they're all bragging and showing off their switches that they got on the back of their Glock. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. It's this cheap Chinese uh, switch you can put on the back of a Glock. It's highly illegal. Probably get you 10 to 25 years in a federal penitentiary. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, the cops aren't tracing these guys down. The FBI isn't tracking these guys down and rounding them up for having these illegal switches on. And they're on, on camera bragging about how uh, you know they can go full auto or whatever. It's just it's stupidity. Stupidity. Law is for thee, not for me. Number five. You could be killed by cannibals. Uh, you know, some studies suggest that the USA is two weeks away from cannibalism during a complete system collapse. So let's say it's not a complete system collapse. Let's say it's something more minor. And I can't think of what that would be because everything is stacked up like dominoes. So maybe it was just temporary food supply chain shortages and things like that. In that instance, I don't think cannibalism is only two weeks away. But if your power grid goes down, if your dollar collapses, if we're attacked uh, by an EMP or a solar flare goes off and it kicks off the power all across the country or even in vast sections of the country, cannibals will be out before you know it. And knowing how to recognize that kind of behavior uh, that's going to be really important and, and basically treat them like marauders. And the way I look at it is if post collapse, if you're a stranger and you're coming around my place and I don't know you, and I mean really know you, then you're a threat to me. That's the way I view that. So next up, number six reason why you won't survive the coming collapse. Disease and infection deaths will skyrocket. People who are dependent on prescription medicine or machines will not last long after SHTF, no doubt about it. Infections will be a great health risk since most people won't be able to clean themselves properly or their wounds. So the dirtier you are, uh, the more you're out you know, running through the woods, doing things you wouldn't normally be doing, uh, the more likely it is you're going to get a little a cut or a scratch on your leg or your arm or your hand or whatever and if you're really dirty because you haven't been cleaning yourself properly because you don't have a water plan then you're more likely to get infected and so um, that's one of those things that disease and infection it will skyrocket I think uh, my guess is at least 30 percent of the population will probably die from disease and infection in a pretty short order, like, you know, within a month or two. Uh, and a lot of that is people that are on like life-saving medicines, you know, when they run out and they can't go down to the doctor anymore, it's over. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's, it's unfortunate that, that there are a lot of people like that, that are on, uh, you know, whether that be blood pressure medication or other, you know, life-sustaining medications. Uh, when that's cut off, you're just SOL. So if you have a way uh, to get with your doctor to get some extra prescription medication, which is very hard to do because of all the druggies out there abusing everything. It's very hard to do that sort of stuff if you're just a normal person and a prepper, but it's worth a try. Uh, or find alternative, um, you know, natural medicines that maybe you could use to replace that prescription medicine. Of course, I'm not a doctor, I'm a mechanic, so don't take my word for it. Talk to your doctor about all this stuff before you do anything, but be prepared. Uh, that's going to be a big killer. Uh, again, I'm going to say 30%, and that's a pretty conservative uh, guesstimate. Uh, it might be more along the lines of 40 or 50%. Last thing here on my list doesn't mean it's the only things that can get you killed, but these are the most likely things. Number seven, neighbors, friends, and family could either be allies or enemies. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, if your best friend is watching his family and his children starve and he sees you have plenty, suddenly again, it goes back to that old saying, the old haves and have nots, you know, and 
when if you're a prepper and maybe you're maybe you're not even a rich person but you've got a lot of supplies and you've got a lot of resources then you will become a target and look out just i'm just saying look out i'm not saying get rid of your best friend or not don't have any groups or anything like that because i think that's dangerous in itself but if this goes on long enough and people get desperate enough and hopeless enough and they're all starving allies could quickly become enemies at the end of the day it comes down to morals unfortunately that's lacking severely in the modern day america self-preservation is a powerful motivator and during shtf the prepared will be safer than the unprepared but in reality no one is safe being prepared will definitely shield you to some degree but unless you have an underground bunker like bill gates or something like that with a you know 50 year supply of food then you're probably not gonna be much better off than anybody else because again the marauders will get you the water supply could be contaminated. You could starve to death. Lack of weapons. You run out of ammo. Maybe you're not into reloading. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. People get desperate enough, they start to cannibalize other people, eating dogs, animals, chickens. If you've got chickens now and you've got roosters like I do, that could be a dead giveaway because those roosters will crow and other people will hear that as basically a dinner bell ringing. As far as SHTF goes, we're one minute to midnight, as they used to say about the nuclear threat. We're very, very close to full collapse. Any day now, I expect to hear more and more about the banks collapsing, more and more about food supply chain shortages and, and farmers failing and, and whatever. It's the time of chaos right now, and it's not being done by accident. It's being orchestrated to destroy a superpower. And so far, they're getting away with it. I don't know how far that'll go, but anyway, guys, I wanted to give you some warnings here. Seven different reasons you won't survive the coming collapse. Again, let me know down in the comments. Do you already have all these things worked out? I hope you do. Uh, let us know if you have some tips and tricks that might help others that are just getting into prepping because I think as more and more stuff collapses in our society, more and more people are seeing that, hey, those preppers weren't crazy after all. Uh, some of them are, don't get me wrong. I mean, just like everything, there's crazy people in every group, but it doesn't mean you're crazy just because you're a prepper. It just means you're preparing for worst case scenario. So I hope you go out and do that while you can. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I stand for liberty to the bitter end. I hope you do too. We'll see you next time.